Okay, everybody. So at this point, we're uh, pretty close to being done. Uh, just about there. You saw me go pretty fast. Here's what the image looks like. We're missing part of his mouth there. We're going to have to go in at some point. But I just want to just go back and show you kind of what we were doing um, and with uh, doing the hatch. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the items that are going to be the uh, negative space. I'm holding down shift while I'm clicking all of these different shapes. You'll note if you can do one big long one like this big one here that you make things a lot easier on yourself. So now if I were to switch uh, to the this yellow and I were to type hatch um, and choose solid, now you can see what that looks like. Now you can start to see uh, Morgan Freeman and his face start to show. The next thing we can do is we have all those selected. What I want to do is highlight everything and uh, we're going to choose a new color. We'll try the green and we'll try hatching again and see what happens here. There we go. And so now we get an idea as to this is what it might look like as a two-tone vinyl graphic. Of course, you're not going to want to leave the hatch on. So the hatch command is just there temporarily. So we can cancel it. You can even click where the hatches are and you can delete them. Because ultimately, when it comes time to cut the vinyl, what you want to do, ah, it didn't select it. Let me try it again. There we go. Uh, when it comes time to doing the vinyl, you just need the lines. That's all. If you leave the hatch in there, it's going to look bad. So we just do the hatch in order to sort of uh, get it the way we want it. So at this point, this is pretty much ready to go. Um, I didn't include all of Morgan Freeman's face, uh, but you get the main idea. So this is how you do it. Now, if you also notice when I was going fast, um, if you look at this line, they're all curved lines. That's because I was using a control point curve. Yet when you look here, these were using the polyline tool. So you choose which tools that work the best for what you're doing. I got tired of the control point curve, so I focused on this particular shape as just a, a polyline instead of a control point curve. A uh, quick thing about the control point curve, uh, I want to just bring it back to here, turn the visibility on. And I want to show you the trick to doing uh, this particular, there's no curve down here. If we were to do this in a control point curve, uh, things you have to be aware of is you have to be aware of the fact that, uh, in fact, let me just zoom out here for a moment. When you put your points apart from each other, you'll notice the curve doesn't actually touch the, the control point. Um, however, if you do a couple really close points, you can make sort of a sharper corner. So that's one of the things I want you to be paying attention to. Whenever I need to make a sharp point, I'm going to do several control points close together. At one point, you might have noticed I turned on edit points. Watch this. If you click a line and you click on this little two tool here with the left mouse button, you can see the control points. And then we can zoom in. And we can see, like, if we put two control points right next to each other, you can create a much sharper point on your curve. To get rid of the edit points, you just use the right, the right mouse button, and that goes away. The other thing is, unfortunately, I did that in my layer 4. I want to be working on the default layer for when we're doing our curves. So now that I have the default layer set up, I'm going to zoom in on here, control point curve. Notice we got a sharp point here, so I'm going to do one dot there, one point here. Then I can do them farther apart, one here, one there. So you get the idea as to how this works. If you want them just gradual lines and you don't need sort of a sharp corner, you can do them a little bit farther apart. But right there, I need some points that are real close together. Do the same thing there. So wherever there's sort of a sharp point, you just want to do two together. There's one other thing we can do. I'm going to end at this point. I'm going to hit enter. The other thing is if you have end checked, I'm sorry, you do clicks O snap here, check end. We can now take, say, for example, a polyline tool. And as long as end is selected, see where it says end, I can click there and add a uh, polyline. And I connect those points looks like the last thing I did was here, so I'm going to click. By clicking that where it says end, I know that it's actually going to um, 
be connected to the line. You want to make sure you do that. It's very important. By doing that, and then at this point I want to do some curves. So I'm going to throw a couple of control point curves here to get this nice sort of curve we got going there. Hit enter every time you're done drawing a line. Go ahead. By the way, that's the other way you can draw curves and make them sharper. You just hit enter, and then the next time you hit the line, it will be a sharper curve. Hit the end. Hit enter. Now that is done, but we have to see it to make sure we've got all of it. So we turn visibility off. And as you can see, I made some errors in my lines. This line in particular um, has some issues with it. So I'm going to have to redraw that line. I'm going to do that using a control point curve. So I just want to get that back. Change visible back on. I'm going to do a control point curve. It's going to be a little bit easier. Less likely to make a mistake with those weird little corners that you saw. Hit enter. B for background bitmap. Click visible. Turn it off. That looks much better. Hit enter. So that command is blank. Now I can click on here. And what I want to do is join all these lines together. So that's the join command. You can click on here. You can just type out J-O-I-N. Click all the curves you want to join. If they will form a closed curve, when you're done, it turns into one. And now Morgan's mouth looks looking a little bit better. So at this point, you are you know ready to go. I'm just going to add the other one. You don't need to see me doing that. But there you go. Using Rhino to create vinyl graphics, creating a silhouette. I hope you enjoyed it and can uh, do some good vinyl graphics for yourself.